Hey guys, Claire here, and today we're going to talk about the latest episode of Archetypes. Now, the topic of discussion was the audacity of the activists, and the featured guests includes actress and activists Jamila Jamil and Sora Agitashlu. Now, I feel like I mispronounced that last name, so pardon me if I did, but this episode, like almost every episode of Archetypes, is one for the books. Just as with the episode last week, I could have easily done with an episode specifically dedicated to each guest because each guest just brought so much to today's episode and I loved how they both gave so many insights about their life experiences and how that has shaped who they are today, not just as actresses, but most importantly, as activists. I really loved how um, the professional or academic, because we know in each episode of Archetypes, you have the guests, you have Megan, but there are always academics who um, gives you a sort of historical context of whatever it is we're talking about. And I really enjoyed uh, the way they went into like the suffrage movement and the history behind the sort of negative connotations that follows feminism, but most importantly, um, feminist activism. And like they said in the episode, you know, sometimes you hear the word activist and talking about uh, women's empowerment and a lot of people sort of like roll their eyes and they're just like, oh God, here we go. And I know I've noticed that around people throughout my life. So that definitely rings true. Even Grazia UK did a brilliant article. And you know, like every episode Megan does, it gets press coverage, right? There are so many media sources that talks and comments about each and every episode. I mean, shoot, even in the UK where they're like, oh my God, we hate Megan, we hope she goes away. You know, like there are articles about it. There are people or a lot of their shows have like panel discussions about it. You know, <laughs> even though they're like, oh, that Megan, why won't she go away? She's always talking. You're, you're obsessing over everything she does. So, okay then. But with this particular episode, I feel like there are so many great articles um, just really going into the root of the conversation of this episode. Sometimes, you know, at the end of each episode, there are some in the media that sort of likes to pick it apart and just go crazy with it and focus on minute details that in the long run really doesn't matter. But this week, a lot of the articles from the media, as far as I can see, have been really great breakdowns of this week's episode. Now Grazia UK um, did a great episode talking about the protesters in the Iranian resistance and if you've been paying attention you know the tragic story and there have been thousands and thousands of women protesting. This a conversation between Megan and Sora was incredible. Now, I've been a fan of her as an actress, and I know that she is deeply involved in activism. And even before I even knew her name or her story, she just has one of those voices in Hollywood that is crazily recognizable, right? There are some people in Hollywood where you hear their voice and you know who they are. And it's such a fabulous episode to hear her and Megan bonding and talking about um, their activism and her story, which, I mean, the, the root of her activism started so early in her life. It was truly an inspiring and sort of heartbreaking story as well. So if you haven't listened, definitely give it a listen. 
Now, even though Megan didn't go into detail about her activism at all in this episode, need I remind you, or for those of you who don't know, Megan has been an activist since she was like 10 years old. There is video of her old teachers <laughs> at her old school talking about her engaging in activism for the Gulf War at the tender age of 10. How impressive is that? We have recently unearthed footage of Megan's very first political protest, aged just 10. Anti-war protests in this country are growing. Thousands of demonstrators gathered outside the White House last night protesting the moves toward possible war. What happened was her friend was upset. One of her fellow pupils, a little boy, burst into tears because his elder brother was due to go to the Gulf, due, due to fight against Iraq, and his, his brother thought that he was going to die. In order to support him, she, she held a protest, a Gulf War protest here at the school. Megan carried a sign that said, uh, peace and harmony for all the world. And that could be a motto that she could use today. Younger children who may not fully understand what is at stake marched and sang nonetheless, saying, war hurts everyone. And as this extraordinary footage shows, even a 10-year-old Megan found herself front and center at the protest. She was 10. She was 10 when she protested the Gulf War. I would say that she had a strong sense of self already. She was one of those children that would stand up for the underdog. She would stand up for what she believed in. And she was a leader amongst her friends, her peer group. Now, Megan's conversation with Jamila, oh, <laughs> oh my God, she is just such a fireball of passion and she just says it like she means it. <laughs> and I really like that Megan just sort of let her let loose and say what she needed to say and get it off her chest. It was such an enjoyable aspect of this week's episode. They talked about uh, sexism. The conversation was very frank, very open, very honest honest, very raw. And for those of you who don't know, Jamila has been sort of one of the first celebrities who really put herself out there, like in the crux of the time when Megan was just getting battered in the press left and right. Um, Jamila was there um, supporting her and calling out the nonsense of the UK press. For those of you who don't know, she is British. Um, and she has been at the receiving end of a lot of uh, attacks from the media as well. So she knows what it feels like. Um, and need I remind you, when Megan was getting battered in the press, especially when she was pregnant, nobody in Harry's family, nobody in the firm said a thing. They did not say a thing. But Jamila really went in to talk about um, the, the tabloids in the UK. She was, <laughs> she was throwing some uh, vocal punches their way. And I love that. And she talked about her um, childhood, her experiences, all the horrible things that she's been through that has allowed her to use her voice and her public persona to give back to females, to women empowerment, to become heavily involved in activism. And I loved her spirit and her spunk when it comes to just embracing who she is and embracing the fact that yes, I am who I am and I'm going to say what I got to say and I'm going to fight for the causes that are near and dear to my heart and I don't care what anyone else says. I'm not here to be, you know, a, a friendly. I'm not here to be liked. It's not a, a popularity contest. I am going to do what I have to do and I support anyone and everyone who is doing the same as well. If you haven't listened to this week's, week's episode, please do yourself a favor and listen to it. It's like a little bit over an hour, but I promise you, it goes by oh so quickly. You guys know, after I listen to each episode, I like to go around online and just see what people are thinking. And the feedback for this week's episode, again, is so good. There's so many people who are like, wow, I love this. So many people love Jamila's story. So many, so many people love um, the support that um, 
is shown for the Iranian women and the plight that they are going through. I really enjoyed Shora's conversation about what really caused her to become an activist. I love that she recognized that she can use the Archetypes podcast, that episode, her voice, um, to really connect to and talk to people around the world. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but there was a recent article um, in one of the Italian papers uh, talking about the reach of the Archetype podcast on Spotify. And I can't remember the exact name. Maybe I'll find the receipt and like throw it in. But uh, one of the big weeks at Spotify was saying, you know, yeah, we've worked with the Obamas and now we're working with Harry and Meghan. And since Meghan's podcast has begun, it has been consistently in the top three, top four worldwide. And for those of you who haven't been paying attention, the, the, the impressive thing here for me, like I expected it to be popular in the US, popular in the UK, even though we know like in the UK and certain people in Australia like to be like, oh, well, we hate Megan, but every project that Megan and Harry does gets a lot of media attention in those countries, you know? So the press says one thing, but then we see that people are truly engaged um, and interested in what they do. They want to hear what they have to say. They keep uh, in touch and in, <laughs> in the know with whatever Harry and Meghan are doing. So that wasn't surprising. But the surprising thing and the most wonderful thing is that it has been a high-ranking podcast globally, even in countries where English is not the main language. I mean, it's been like in the top of the charts in India, in Asia. It's insane the reach that this episode, not this episode, this podcast has had on a global scale. So I love that Shoha understood that and took the opportunity to speak in her native tongue, to talk to the audience and, and, and talk about the plight of the women there, understanding how powerful it is and hoping that it not just reaches people who don't know about it, um, but it reaches to the young women who are there. Um, to let them know that they're not alone and there's a lot of us worldwide who are here to support them during this difficult time. Now, of course, you know, the UK press is at it again, but this week they weren't picking it apart and saying, well, Megan, Megan said this or twisting her words in that way. But what I did notice is someone shared an article talking about um, this anecdote Megan shared that someone, she didn't say the name, talked about or encouraged her to continue to be an activist when she um, got married to Harry. Because you know, when you marry into that family, you're supposed to be a Stepford wife, be quiet and look pretty and wave, but that person encouraged Megan to be engaged in activism, which is something that she's been involved in since she was a child. And this article sort of said, well, you know, yes, Megan did continue to engage in a lot of women's empowerment themed activism in the UK, talking about her working with Smartworks and Grenfell Kitchen. And there was something else. But the thing that made me chuckle was them trying to connect Megan's work and work ethic to the Queen and to Kate. And I'm like, um, yeah, no. <laughs> Megan's been doing this since she was a child. There's video of it. There's people who, um, her teachers and professors at different schools talking about her always volunteering, always um, protesting, using her voice, um, trying to champion the things that she cares about even as a child. She, she's not taking um, the tips <laughs> from Kate or anybody else in that family, okay? Like, it's insane to me <laughs> and really funny the way that they're trying to spin that narrative. But one thing 
about Harry and Meghan stands or Sussex squatties out there is that they always come through with the receipts. And there's so many of them that were posting and responding to some of these reporters who were like, yeah, you know, Meghan, Meghan is involved in activism because, you know, she's following the, the lead of the other ladies of the royal household. And we're like, uh, what lead? What lead? Come on now. And not only that, but a lot of them provided receipts showing that when Megan used her voice for things that were very important, the things that she's always talked about, things that she continues to talk about today, she was battered in the press for it. And the things that she was talking about was deemed as too controversial, too outspoken, too American. Talk about period poverty. She'll talk about racism. She'll talk about female empowerment. These are trigger subjects in this country where the royal family, despite being led by the queen for 70 odd years, is still a very patriarchal hierarchical country. But now they want to twist it, which is the game that the UK media likes to do. Attack because Meghan does something but then they try to amplify when Kate or somebody else copies exactly what Megan does. And then they twist the narrative. But this is the age of the internet. So we know what they're doing. And we're always happy to call them out on it. 